All right, so it's the actual car from the movie. That was Steve McQueen's last movie. Should be a 51 Chevy, right? I'll be there in a half hour, 45 minutes. Bye. This guy has the car that Steve McQueen drove in his last movie, Hunter. You ever see the movie? No. It's a really good movie. You should watch it. OK, but anyway, we're going to go buy the car. Hey, Rick, why don't you just stay here and let me go? I know you're a Steve McQueen wannabe. And well, I will I, buy I'm not a Steve McQueen wannabe. I just want to go take a look at the car. It's worth a lot of money. We can make some money off it. Look, I just, we all know that you're going to get the car. You're going to pay too much for it. You've got the Bieber fever from McQueen. Come on, Corey, let's go. No, no, just because it's Steve McQueen's car doesn't mean I'm going to keep it. I'm done with you guys. Come on. Don't spend too much money. I'll take care of it. So this is it, huh? It is. 1951 uh, Chevy convertible that Steve McQueen drove in the movie The Hunter. That is sweet. And where did you get it? It came from his estate. You can hear him grinding the gears, and you can hear it running in the movie. OK. My dad has some kind of weird man crush on Steve McQueen. <laughs> it's not a man crush. I just think the guy's really cool, all right? It's a man crush, dude. <laughs> I'm a used car dealer, and this is what I do, is try to turn a profit. It's probably worth somewhere between 80 and 100,000. If we can come in somewhere around 40 grand, that'd be great. Do you mind if I have someone come down and take a look at it? Just to make sure there's no major hidden problems, everything's correct? Sure, I understand. All right, I'll be right back. I'll give Thank him a call. You. The car is beautiful, and McQueen drove it in his last movie. What's not to love? But the business side of me says, calm down and get it checked out. Wow. I'm really glad you guys called me out for this one, man. <laughs> yeah. This is beautiful. You know, in 51, that was when Chevrolet started that campaign, see the USA in your Chevrolet. They only did about uh, 20,000 of these in a convertible. 51 Chevy was a great car. They were very much an everyday man's car. This was an affordable car. When they were brand new, they were $2,030 in the convertible form. Can I see in the trunk? Sure. You got some certificates in here, too. That's cool, man. Yeah, certificates are what you need to see. Should we take it for a spin? Is that all right? Whatever you want to do. Where are you going? Where are you going? What are you doing? Well, I'm going to drive it. I'm the one buying it. What'd you have me come out here for? Check it out, make sure everything's cool on it. Well, how you expect me to check the car out if you're not going to let me drive it? This is Steve McQueen's 51 Chevy. I got to drive it. Fine. Thanks, brother. <laughs> I can't believe I'm in the back seat of this thing. How's it back there, Rick? Comfortable? <laughs> I should be driving this car right now. It's really solid, man. There's not a rattle or a shake or nothing in this car. Oh, dang This it. is a nice car. It really is a nice car. To think that Steve McQueen sat in this seat, held this steering wheel, ran through these gears. Rick, you should feel this. You'd really like it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> this car was in such nice shape. My job was easy today. I couldn't say that the car is a 10, but it's a rock solid eight for sure. You know, I've seen 51 Chevy convertibles going for all kinds of prices, but I think I would solidly put it in the low 30s as far as the car is concerned. Now you've got the McQueen factor. OK. That falls right into your court. OK, well, thanks, Danny. Absolutely. Any collector would love to have a 51 Chevy convertible. And then uh, what's it worth because it was Steve McQueen's? Kind of take it from there. All right, so how much do you want for it? 40 grand. It's in the neighborhood of 30, just the way it is. I think Steve McQueen's got to be worth a little bit more. I'll give you 35 cash. Um, I put it down on the money where I kind of needed it to be. Can you come up a couple grand? To what, 37? 37? I, I think it's a fair price. I say go for it. Thirty-seven thousand. All right, can I drive you down to the pawn shop? We'll take care of it. Let's go. All right, you're driving the jeep back. Give me your keys. I can't believe I actually own a car that was driven by Steve McQueen in a movie, and now I finally get to drive it. I am in heaven. Now I really feel like Steve McQueen. Has anyone seen my uh, '51 Chevy? Someone move it. 
I got rid of him. You sold it? You do remember the auction, don't you? The car hauler came by and is taking it to Florida, and he's probably in Arizona by now. There's no way I'm missing this auction. Corey's going with you. Why is he going with me? Pops, just calm down. We're going to go out to Florida. We're going to take it easy. We're going to have a good time. And we're going to make some money. Besides, old people really love Florida. Me and Corey are here in Fort Lauderdale at Auctions America. And I'm selling my 51 Chevy that used to be owned by Steve McQueen. I just hope I make a profit. Here we go. I'm really nervous. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another star in the show. Lot number 594 is a 1951 Chevrolet Stylon Deluxe. This is the automobile that Hollywood legend Steve McQueen drove frequently in the final movie of his illustrious career, The Hunter, made in 1980. <laughs> 80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80, $80
you're going to get a lot more than 100. We're talking about Steve McQueen. I know we're talking about Steve McQueen. I'm willing to go 70,000 cash right now. I mean, I that's... couldn't do 70,000. I mean, my bottom, bottom dollar would be right at 120. I'd go 80 grand, but I wouldn't go no more. You're realizing I'm going to be 100 grand into it. The auction charges, it sits around for a year. It's the cost of money. Uh, 80,000 won't, won't make it with me. Okay. I, I couldn't do that deal. I mean, I'll go 85. I can't let it go for that. It means too much to me. And Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, man. OK, come on, Chum. I am so bummed we could not make a deal. But 85 grand was really the most I could risk. Oh, this is cool. La Grand Fuga. You know what that is, right? No. The Great Escape. Now, these are a couple uh, posters. For, uh, this one's from Italy. It's a two-sheet. The other one's from France. It's Steve McQueen in both. This was a mega movie. I mean, this had Steve McQueen, James Garner, Richard Attenborough, everybody in it. I like how they're running from their lives, and they're still posing for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the posters from a dealer in Europe, and they're large. They use like on the side of a building. I'm looking to get $500 for the pair, and the least I'd be willing to take is $300 for the pair. These are incredible. The Great Escape, this was a mega blockbuster movie all around the world. And one of the reasons why was because it dealt with World War II, and especially it was big in Europe because they were all involved in it. It was actually based on a true story. There was a prison camp the Nazis had for the most troublesome prisoners. They were actually able to tunnel out, and just a great scene at the end with Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is the one where Steve McQueen was being chased on a motorcycle, and he actually had to dress up like a Nazi and chase himself because the other guy couldn't ride as good as Steve That's McQueen, it. right? That is right, yeah. That's it. OK. I don't know how many hundreds of times you've told me that story. <laughs> My dad's obsession with Steve McQueen has gone way past fandom. If someone walked in with a tissue Steve McQueen sneezed in, my dad would frame it, hang it on his wall, and pay way too much money for it. These are awesome. So big question, what do you want for these? I'm asking 500 for the pair. OK. Take 350. You'd pay for these? Yeah, they'll sell. I mean, it's French. Well, some people think that's trendy. Some people just love Steve McQueen enough to buy anything with his name on it. <laughs> I'm offering 350. How about 400? Um, can you do 375? Yes. I'll do that, yeah. OK. All right. All right, write him up. Feel pretty good. That was higher than I expected him to offer. He does seem like a sucker for Steve McQueen. I think I will bring some more McQueen posters in. <laughs> Earlier, I got a call from a guy selling a classic Mustang. So Corey and I are on our way to go check it out. So this is it, huh? This is it. The 68 Mustang Fastback GT. This is what we're here for? Uh, yes, we're definitely here for this. This is the coolest car ever made, possibly. This is a car that Steve McQueen used to drive. I called the guys down from the pawn shop today to check out my 1968 Mustang GT. I can't afford to restore the car, so I need to sell it. I would like to have 20000 I might have to come down even as much as 12000 It's not the actual car Steve McQueen drove. One exactly identical to what he had. In Bullet, he had a 68 Mustang GT Fastback. Right. This is the quintessential muscle car. It's 1968, the movie Bullet comes out. It was the greatest car chase scene in the history of all movies, and they have no special effects or anything like that. This is it. Steve McQueen was one of the biggest movie stars of the 60s and the 70s. I'm a huge fan, and it's not just me. There's a ton of diehard McQueen fans out there that I could sell this to. I want it. You want to sell this, right? I want to sell it. How much do you want for it? I got to get 20 grand out of it. When this car is, like, new again, it will be worth around $100,000. Let me have a friend come down and take a look. Sure. Gentlemen, goodness gracious, a Steve McQueen machine. I own Counts Customs right here in Las Vegas. We specialize in building anything cool with an engine. Let me ask you, how long have you had it? For about three years. Nice. 
I mean, I just love this car. I mean, this is the quintessential muscle car. Please talk about buying it. Rick, besides Corey, what are your concerns? <laughs> I just want to make sure it's a GT. And I need to know if I can get it back to beautiful condition without putting me in bankruptcy court. OK. Take a peek, man. There's no rust rot in it. It's just surface rust. This ain't rust. It looked like somebody used some sort of a chemical stripping agent on it. It makes it look like that. Sexy. The way all the door gaps line up, the way the doors open and close, I mean, it's solid. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, the soul of this beautiful baby right here. Ah. It is the factory engine, five liter, 302 engine. That's correct. That's exactly what's supposed to be in here. So is it a GT? Looks like a GT to me, brother, and it looks like a nice one, believe it or not. It's this grill with the fog lights built into the grill. Things like the gas cap, that's all factory GT items. So what do you think it's worth? I would comfortably put this car anywhere between twelve dollars and $15,000 as it sits right now. OK. All right, man, if I buy it, I'll give you a call. I'll be waiting for that call. <laughs> Corey? Most people would look at this and think it's a pile of garbage. It'll be a bit of a challenge to make it perfect, but it's a gem. I'll give you 10 grand for it. Oh, I, I got to have more than that. I'll come down a little bit, but I can't come down that much. That's half of what I was asking. My guy just said it was worth 12, dude. No, I need to get 15. I'll go 11. I mean, basically, it's just going to sit around here and rot. It can't get worse here. I'll keep it inside, out of the weather. Can you come up any? How about 12? How about 12.5? That's the least I can take, 12.5. All right, it's a deal. OK. I hope that they'll be able to take it and do the work to it that I haven't been able to do to it, because the car well deserves it. All right, so where are we at? It's top secret. <laughs> I'm just hoping you're not bringing me out here to bury me or bury the car. This is Vegas, you know. So you really did bring us out here to kill us. <laughs> we've been working around the clock to get this bullet Mustang ready for Rick Harrison. And after everything we've been through with her, she's finally ready for the road. So I've got Kevin bringing Rick and Corey out to the desert so they can see what this baby can do. Well, there's something coming. This definitely doesn't look like the piece of crap we bought. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's not the same car, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Jeff? <laughs> God, man. <laughs> that thing is amazing. Beautiful, huh? It came out gorgeous. Oh, this is cool, man. I poured my heart and soul into it just like I was building it for myself. This is just absolutely amazing. Glad you dig it, brother. I'm looking at this car, and everything about it's amazing. The paint job, the chrome, the wheels. I mean, this car used to look like a piece of <laughs> Now it's one of the prettiest cars I have ever seen in my life. Sexy, this huh? It's amazing. What'd you do to the motor? Everything. Well, that's definitely not stock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we took this car down to the last nut and bolt. It's a very, very happy motor, dude. That's amazing. So I'm assuming it costs more than 15 grand to fix. Well, you know, well, let's talk about that later. Let's go for a drive first, man. <laughs> Before I tell Rick how much we ended up spending on the bullet, I want to get him out on the road so he can see just how bad this car is. Hopefully, he won't be too mad when he hears we went over budget. All right, do your thing. This thing is amazing. <laughs> this thing's literally the fountain of youth. Oh, look at me in the mirror. I'm 22 years younger. <laughs> Danny really did this car perfect. And the whole fact that it looks exactly like the car in the movie is a big deal. I'm a big Steve McQueen fan. I mean, he was the king of cool. This thing's amazing, dude. <laughs> I'm going to own this car for a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Look, I grew hair. <laughs> Danny told me he'd get this thing done for $15,000. I think it's going to go way over that. OK, so I'm imagining it cost more than the 15 to 20. It did. I definitely blew past our budget. I know we were, we were trying to keep it 
as close as we could to 15. Uh, I've got, you know, 22 in it. I mean, honestly, if you would have told me 35, I would have thought that was a deal. But uh, hey, I don't got to pay that. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're that happy, I'm that happy. Uh, I bought the car for 12.5. Danny only charged me 22 to fix it, which means I'm in the entire thing, 34.5. And literally, the car's worth 50 or 60. Or the way I'm looking at it, I think the thing's priceless. What do we have here? I got a movie poster signed by Jacqueline Bissett, Robert Vaughn, Robert Duvall. And this cat here, Steve McQueen. That's really, really cool. Bullet was a hell of a movie. I came down to the pawn shop today to see about selling my Bullet poster. Paid $3,900, and I definitely would like to make a little profit. So where'd you get it? I was at a fundraiser for kids, and it was a silent auction item. did not it have, like, one of the all-time number one car chases in a movie? Oh, like yeah, dude. It's been 25 years since I've seen the movie, uh, but I do remember the car chase. <laughs> we all wanted to drive that car through the streets of San Francisco. I mean, catch a little air. Steve McQueen really was a race car driver. I mean, in Bullet, he did a lot of uh, the driving himself. Not too many freaky cops like Bullet around. You look at the Italian shoes and the turtleneck, and you have to wonder. But when some rare Chicago blood starts spilling in San Francisco, they give Bullet the mop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those lines sound cheesy today. But in uh, 1968, all that mattered was Steve McQueen was in the movie, because he really was the hottest ticket in Hollywood at the time. Steve McQueen was one of the biggest movie stars of the 1960s and 1970s. He had a reputation of being hard to work with on set, but he was so popular with audiences, the directors just had to put up with him. I mean, his nickname was the King of Cool. How badass is that? So who signed it again? We've got Jacqueline Bissett. She was a hottie of her time. One of my favorites right here, Robert Duvall. I think of Robert Duvall right now, and he's a cool character right now. Uh, Robert Vaughn, another big actor in Hollywood, and of course, Steve McQueen here. I know it's a rare poster, and Steve McQueen is a real hot item at the moment. I'm a huge fan of Steve McQueen. Of course I'm interested in this poster. And it's not just me. There's a ton of diehard McQueen fans out there that I could sell this to. His stuff has become super collectible. So what do you want to do with it? Uh, I want to sell it. How much are you looking to get out of it? I've heard numbers that range from four grand to 35 grand, so. OK. I really like Steve McQueen. I mean, uh, I just offered $95,000 for one of his bikes. Wow. I recently looked at a 1940 Indian motorcycle that belonged to Steve McQueen, and we couldn't make a deal. I mean, I've been kicking myself ever since. The guy is my favorite actor of all time. Do you mind if I have someone come in and take a look at these signatures? Just to make sure they're legit? No, I, I think that'd be great. Let me go get my buddy a call, get him down here. If all the signatures are legit, we can do something. Awesome. OK? All right. As much as I want to make an offer and snatch this thing up right now, I have to get these signatures checked out. If they're legit, there's no way I'm going to let that guy walk out the door. He forged, and of course, they don't want to buy a forgery, so they give me a call. All right, I got something really cool here. A bullet movie poster signed by Steve McQueen and the entire cast. I don't think I've ever seen a poster before. I love the movie, though. It was fantastic. We're basically dealing with most of the cast, which I like because you get more evidence to tell if it's going to be authentic or not. Or else make it more valuable than just Steve McQueen's signature, OK? Well, Steve McQueen's signature is pretty rare. I mean, he died at only 50 years old, didn't like to sign a lot of autographs. His memorabilia is very valuable. What other problems do you think might be with it? I mean, I just need to know if that's Steve McQueen right there, because I know he didn't sign a lot of stuff. Right. I'm going to concentrate on the Steve McQueen and the Robert Duvall. They're the ones going to be the most valuable. We should take a close look on the uh, Robert Duvall. His signature, it can be all over the place, so it's really hard to authenticate. But um, he does have the, uh, the double L's at the end. The shape of the D is pretty much dead on. All right, well, let's take a look at the big one here. Steve McQueen. He does write an S. It's almost like a figure eight. The shape of the capital T is huge, and that's the way he normally writes it. But I see that the T-bar is missing. Most of the ones I've seen before finish up with the T, but he doesn't do it that way every time. The shape of the M's off, but he does write a six design for the, the Q. I would say this poster is worth probably $1,000 without the signatures. But with the signatures, It's worth zero. They're not good. Oh, you got to be kidding. Oh, man. I'm sorry, but 
Steve McQueen's signature, I've studied it a lot, and it's got way too many hairs for it to be authentic. Ah. Sorry, sir. I wish I could say thanks, but... Yeah. No, how good are they? No. Oh, my God, that's such a drag. I always thought it was a good signature, so it's a disappointment. You got two strikes on Steve McQueen so far. Yeah, second time in a few months, I couldn't get a Steve McQueen item. Um, all right, man, I'm sorry. I mean... Yeah, not as sorry as I am. Sorry to have it. I usually don't let my emotions get involved in my business, but I really wanted this thing to be real. I'm just glad I didn't shell out a bunch of money for a fake. And one of these days, I'm actually gonna buy a genuine McQueen piece. At least I hope I will. So you guys look really comfortable. <sighs> this sets a whole new precedent around here. Antoine is working harder than you guys. You know what? And I'm not even gonna get mad at you because you guys are gonna leave on a mission. I'm all about missions, what's up? You guys are driving up to Carson City and there's a guy up there with a 1970 650 Tiger Triumph, okay? Oh, sweet. Wants 10 grand for it, I'm sure you can pick it up for right around eight grand. As long as it runs good, I want it. So, you know what? You guys It's not gonna run good. How do you know it's not gonna run good? Because it's a Triumph. Don't Triumphs run better than Harleys? No. Yes. The only reason he likes Triumphs is because I like Harleys. No, I liked Triumphs before you were born. I just collect... They're backwards, dude. No, That's they're weird. just different than American bikes because the old Triumphs are backwards. Yeah, they're backwards. Well, what's the problem? It's weird. Well, you just have to get used to doing it. They're lame. I'm giving you guys a break when I shouldn't be. So, go to Carson City. Bring Antoine with you. If it runs good, just buy it for me, okay? Even Can I ride my Harley? I don't care what you ride. Just go up there and get me the motorcycle. Ready for a road trip, Big Hoss? I guess so. You want to ride bikes? I'm down. Okay, cool. <sighs> Let's get out of here. All right. Hey, how's it going? Corey. The bikes are back in the warehouse. Let's yeah. check them out. We do motorcycle frames, we do gas tanks, we do oil tanks, we do handlebars. We got 5,000 different parts we make here in the US. So pretty much, yeah, if you're, if you're building a custom bike, you're gonna at least have a few parts from these guys on it. Well, the bikes are back here, let me show you. We got a couple of nice ones, I think you're gonna really get excited. This is a 1970 Triumph. Oh, that's nice, man. I actually bought this bike in 1999 and sent it to my nephew, and he restored this bike in three years from a pallet of parts to exactly as you see it now. It's actually funny, man. I've never liked Triumphs, but this is uh, kind of tickling me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 1970 Triumph Trophy 650 for sale. It's fully restored. It's really a nice piece. You don't find them this way very often. I'd like to get $10,000 for that. You like this thing? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, it's actually really clean. Uh, your nephew did a really good job. I mean, it's just like it left the factory floor. And it runs like a sewing machine. It really, it's it's kind of a really fun bike to drive. Chum, you gotta realize in the 60s and 70s, these things hands down were just a better machine than a Harley was. They were a lot faster. They were heads and tails above Harley in technology. But they've kind of gone in and out of business a bunch of times, right? Yeah, absolutely. I believe it was in the 70s that didn't they run out of stock? I think you're right. Which is basically what made a lot of customers switch to Hondas. Honda was a big, big player in the mid to late 70s. 10 years ago, you couldn't find a Triumph on the streets. They're real collectible, absolutely. We have another one over here. Oh, that trike is sweet. It's as fast as it looks, too. This is what we call our Paco race trike. We built it in 2013 for the show circuit to attract attention and bring people into our booth and so forth. So this one looks like it's meant to go really fast. It's a five speed with a chain drive because it's 125 inches, about 140 horsepower. So this is a pretty special one of a kind bike. What do you want for the trike? I think it's worth every penny of 40,000. You couldn't build it for that, you know? It's a one of a kind piece and you're not gonna find another one anywhere in the world like it. Okay. So what are you looking for on the Triumph? I'd like to get $10,000 for it. I think it's reasonable. Well, I guess we gotta ride them. I'll do the Triumph. I'm kind of scared of this thing, honestly. It looks intimidating. Yeah, you really gotta pay attention when you drive this one. It's really fast. Did you guys bring your helmets? Yes, yes we, we did. did. All right. Antoine, you wanna go grab them? Grab mine too, please. Man, you guys are lazy. <laughs> yeah! Ha, 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 ha.
These bikes both run great, and I know my dad really wants to triumph, but I'm not sure they meet my motorcycle standards. So it all depends if Steve wants to lay off the gas and lower the gap on this price. Left you in the dust, big hoss. This thing looks intimidating, and let me tell you what it is. But well, you feel like a badass driving this thing. Definitely got a style to it. What did you think about the Triumph? You know, uh, I've never ridden a British bike before. It feels like I'm driving on the wrong side of the street. Well, I'm telling you right now, we got to get this thing right here. We're going to be dumb if we don't pull back up to the shop with this bad boy. This trike, we'd like to get 40000 I'm really liking it. But that being said, I think we are going to end up passing on the trike. Um, seems like you guys just got a little bit too much money in it. And it's just going to be a hard sell at the shop. But what can we really do on the Triumph? We'd like to get $10,000. Would you take six? No. No. I think it's a legit $10,000, $11,000 bike. I'll do eight. I can go to seven. You got to remember, I buy these to make money on them, too. Getting up into eight and nine grand, you know, there's not much there for me to make. 75. Seven. That's the best I could do. Uh, we'll have to pass. Have to pass? OK. Uh, 75. 75, your dad's going to be mad if you don't come back with that for over $500. Even Antoine knows that. That's right. 72. I think I'm going to hold it 75. Well, maybe next time, my man. I'll be around. Thank Appreciate you, it. sir. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the ride, man. Oh, uh, no. My pleasure. Back to the two wheels, I All guess. All right. Corey, over $300, you guys are gonna be pissed. What's up, Pop? Hey, what's up? You guys get my motorcycle? No. What happened? Corey wouldn't buy it over $300. The guy was at $7,500 and Corey was stuck at $7,200. What, 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 what did I tell you guys to do? Rick, I told him buy the bike, your dad's gonna be pissed at you. The and bike he... was in perfect condition. You tattletales, man. I, I, honestly, no, dude, the deal wasn't right. I didn't tell you to buy it because it was worth it or not. I told you to buy it for me. There was no money to be made on the bike. I did you a favor. No, son, I wanted the bike for myself because what do I ride, guys? Triumphs. So I basically paid for you guys to have a vacation? Not you guys. I argued to bring the bike home, Rick. I really did. Your son, Corey, decided not to buy the bike over $300. You know what? This is all my fault. I should have never sent you guys. Thanks a lot, Cor. Rick, really, you can send me on another trip. I promise. <laughs>